The jewel in the crown of NSAT, our biggest achievement to date, is to work with our generators, our transmission companies, our distribution companies, our supply chain contractors, and agree one set of competencies, the competency accord, that ends the inefficiency and the nonsense of company-based localized trade testing and authorization, of additional training and multiple authorizations, which meant that if you were a contractor working for two different asset owners or distribution companies, every time you turned up, you had to be retested and retrained on the, skills, on the same skills. By pulling everybody onto the same competence page and developing a map of competencies in the sector and agreeing that when somebody turns up with those competencies earned and assessed in one company, they are good to go in your company on in your assets has been our biggest achievement. What does that look like? As a framework of competencies, it looks something like this. This is a section of the competency accord for level three, technician level, that we've pulled into a discrete route map through for our apprenticeship. So this is the new trailblazer apprenticeship at level three for a power network craftsperson in the, sub -fitting, in the substation fitting uh, pathway. There's a rule of combination that works through there um, and it actually unifies across all providers what an apprentice looks like in this space. But more than that, once you begin through this first group, group A, to agree what a common induction program looks like, and induction is important because in the power sector it could run anywhere between four and six months of the training, we're actually able to transport it into other sectors. So when the water and waste management industries came to look at trailblazers and develop, they looked at that induction program and said, 90% of that will do for us. We have a couple of peculiarities to our industry that we'll add on, but most of that we will take. So we're actually beginning to spread those competencies wider across the sectors, out of power, into water and waste management and other areas now, unifying again more people onto the same page. When you get everybody onto this kind of page and you specify competencies, and any one of those standards looks like this, a three or four page statement of what good looks like for the competence, the knowledge requirements supporting that competence, the skills needed to fulfill that competence, and the attitudes and behaviours that fundamentally need to be in place for that competence to work. When you have that clearly specified for each of those standards across the entire competency framework, you then have something that employers can take to colleges and universities and schools and say, here's where we're at. Here's where our current workforce need to be in terms of competence. In your programs that progress into our sector, have this content underpinning what you're trying to do. Join up. Finally, on these papers, we can specify exactly what we want and need. We are using this now for our current workforce. Help us and join up by getting these into your university programs, your college programs, your apprenticeships in schools, Look at the upper end of school and how you can support. Look for the maths and the science and the technology that makes all this work. Clearly specified right across the competency framework. That's probably the biggest NSAP achievement to date. One last important mix in this, and it's a testament to the extent of the employer leadership in the UK. We now have an energy and efficiency industrial partnership where 67 employers and their supply chain and other key stakeholders like trade unions and universities and colleges and training providers have come together. They're managed by energy and utility skills. And with co-investment uh, to the tune of 115 mil uh, 115 million, 115 and a half million pounds, they have been given responsibility for the skills infrastructure in their sector. For a long, long time, the UK government has tried to do this for employers. But about three or four years ago, with the advent of the coalition government, they basically said, it's too hard. No matter what we do, employers, you complain that we're still not, you're still not getting the skills you need. You do it. There's the budget. There's the co-investment. You go on with it. If it's wrong now, if it's not what you need, it's your fault. We'll support you to make this happen, but you, stay, you go behind the, driving, the, the steering wheel of the car and you drive the car. You tell us. You start. You make the first mark on the bit of paper. We'll follow and support. So that's power, that's water, that's gas, that's waste management. Um, all working together with their supply chain and their stakeholders to sort out the entire skills landscape. They didn't start afresh, they started from the competency accord and all those specifications that unite the employers. And they've built from there. It's a long-term collaboration. We know that in the, with the UK having an election in May, they're actually 
both parties in terms of the leadership party at the moment and the opposition are looking at this potentially being the way forward for organizing the skills landscape. And SSCs may have to evolve to support this type of thing happening. Um, that's what the partnership is tasked with delivering. The youth employment, including sector attraction, work experience and traineeships. High quality apprenticeships and other programs. Flexibility in design, delivery, administration of training. Included in that is the transferability and the movement and the freer movement of workers and competencies across employers. Enhancing procurement, practice and supply chain and trade and growth through skills.